Hey fam, not sure if you saw Yaman's tweet and subsequent Medium article on the base naming system, but I thought it was full of amazing info and I wanted to highlight some of it here. You know, with Luxo being the blockchain for social, it's good to know decentralization matters in every aspect. His article goes into great depth, so I'm just going to kind of mention a few of those points here. You know, with base names, we're talking simplified addresses. .base.eth names make blockchain addresses human readable. It's ENS-like, so it's similar to .eth names, but on the base layer blockchain. Now, the wildcard resolution is queries are redirected if subnames aren't found on Ethereum. So that makes for off-chain data. So they use external URLs for name resolution, not Ethereum. It's a key point right there. So it's controlled by base. Ownership secured on base, but the resolution is base team's control. So, you know, which nets a dangerous trade-off in the end, right? So it's easier to onboard people, but much less control. So to kind of, you know, make it more clear for the non-technical peeps, let's just talk uh, about an analogy here. So, you know, imagine uh, you're a pirate on the open seas for a treasure hunt. Now, instead of having a long list of, you know, complicated GPS coordinates to find said treasure, you're simply giving uh, an easy to remember clue, like find the treasure on the island where King Louis XIV is buried. You know, this uh, of course makes it much easier for you to navigate. Now, let's say they decide to store those exact same clues, but in a centralized location, like a treasure map that's only available in the king's personal library. So if someone controls that library, they could change the clues. It could lead people to the wrong spot or it could be a hoax and there's no treasure at all to be found. So this is central control, you know, similar to how .base.eth names work. Although you own your name, the directions or those clues that people follow to find your address can be changed by whoever controls that system. So why is decentralization important here? Now, in a truly decentralized system, there's no single library or central authority controlling the treasure map at all. Everyone has equal access to the same information and no one can secretly alter the clues or change the map without everyone else knowing. So this ensures that the ownership and control of your .eth or your .base.eth name are fully in your hands and no one can redirect it or tamper with it. So this means you truly own and control your digital identity without relying on or trusting a third party like Base. So it also protects against censorship, fraud, and potential security risks ensuring that the blockchain remains a reliable and trustworthy system for everyone involved. I highly recommend giving Yaman's Medium article a read as it really goes into a great description about why things like uh, the ERC-3668 resolver, you know, could be pointed to an internal database managed by the base team, you know, which that could cause issues with backend logic and other, you know, major concerns with, with the centralized solution. So, in essence, you give all of your faith to the base team. So now I'm sure they are great and all, but that's not uh, that's not the ethos of Web3. That's not why we're here. And that's not the pirate code, you know? Before I head back to my treasure hunt, let me hit you with one rhetorical question. Why is pirating so addictive? They say once ye lose ye first hand, ye get hooked.